Hi everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing the ideal gas law and show worked solutions to various questions regarding ideal gases. Here is our syllabus stop point. In the video on gas laws, we discussed molar volume. Molar volume is the idea that for ideal gases, the volume which is occupied by that gas at certain conditions, either STP or RTP, which is 0 degrees and 100 kPa's, and 25 degrees and 100 kPa's, is constant for all ideal gases. At STP, one mole of gas will occupy 22.71 litres, regardless of what gas it is. And at RTP, it will occupy a volume of 24.79 litres. Let's look at two practice questions which require us to utilise the molar volume to calculate the volume of a certain amount of gas. This first question reads, how much volume does 0.75 moles of CO2 gas occupy at 298.15 kelvins and 100 kPa's? When approaching these questions, we should immediately recognise that the conditions in which the volume is being measured in is given to us at RTP. We know that at RTP, the molar volume is 24.79 liters per mole. This means that for 0.75 moles of CO2 gas, the volume will equal to 0.75 multiplied by the molar volume, which is 24.79, and that gives a value of 19 liters to two significant figures. That's because two significant figures is the smallest amount that's given to us in the question. The second question is very similar. However, this time it is given to us at STP, which is 273.15 Kelvin and 100 kPa's. We know that at STP, the volume is equal to 22.71 liters per mole. Since we have 0.75 moles, the volume is going to equal to 0.75 multiplied by 22.71, and that is going to equal to 17 liters to two significant figures. This next question asks us to calculate the volume of a gas given its mass. We are also given that it is at RTP. So what we need to find out is ultimately the number of moles of O2 gas, because once we have found out the number of moles, we can multiply that by the molar volume at RTP, which is 24.79 liters per mole, to work out what our volume of gas is going to be. So the first thing that we need to work out is what the number of moles of O2 is going to be. This is equal to 10 divided by the molar mass of O2, which is 16 times 2 because it is diatomic, and that will equal to 0 0.3125. From here, we now need to work out what the volume is, and we do that by multiplying n by the molar volume, which is 24.79. So 0 0.3125 multiplied by 24.79 is going to equal to. 7.75 and that is in three significant figures because three significant figures is the lowest amount that we've used for our calculation. This next question now asks us how many atoms of oxygen are there in 10 liters of carbon dioxide at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa's. We know that 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa's is going to be STP. So to help us work out how many atoms of oxygen there are, we need to work out how many moles 10 liters of carbon dioxide is going to be equivalent to and then multiply that by Avogadro's numbers to work out the amount of atoms. So to work out the number of moles, n is going to equal to 10 liters divided by the molar volume at STP, which is 22.71 liters. That is going to give us a value of approximately 0.44. Now from here, we will need to multiply n by Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And that is going to give us a value of 2.65 times 10 to the 23 atoms. However, there was a trick in this question. Carbon dioxide has the chemical formula CO2. That means for every one molecule of carbon dioxide, there are two atoms of oxygen. This means that we will now have to take this value and multiply it by 2 to give us a final answer of 5.30 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen.
When each of the four individual gas laws are combined, they create a new formula which describes the ideal gas law. Gas laws are laws which apply in all ideal situations. But what exactly are ideal gases? So we say that an ideal gas is a gas which is assumed to assume its natural properties. But what does that mean? When we think about gases, we usually discuss its ability to be free-flowing and free-forming. That means that the volume of the gas will occupy the volume of its vessel. However, that is not always the case. An example of this is carbon dioxide. While it is a free-flowing gas as we think of it at room temperature to be, and standard pressure, at a very high pressure it can actually become liquefied. And if that were to happen, then this following equation, PV equals NIT, which is the ideal gas law, would no longer be applicable as the volume would no longer be the volume of the container. However, the ideal gas law is useful in helping us determine the conditions for a gas which is ideal. The ideal gas law follows the following formula, PV equals to NRT, where P is the pressure in kilopascals, V is the volume in litres, N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, which is given to us as 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. That's on the NASA data sheet. T is in Kelvin, which is equal to 273.15 plus the degrees in Celsius. Here is an example of how we would use the ideal gas law. The question reads, calculate the volume for 0.500 moles of nitrogen gas at 350 Ks and 150 kPa's. For this question, we can't use our understanding of molar volume because these conditions are neither RTP nor are they STP. So we will now need to use the ideal gas law to work out what the volume of this is going to be. Our ideal gas law is given to us as the formula PV equals to NRT. The values that we know are T in kelvins, which is 350. We know R, which is given to us on the NASA data sheet, which is 8.314. N is the number of moles, which is 0.5. P is going to be 150 kilopascals. So now we are only left with the unknown of V. The way that we can calculate V is by rearranging this formula, by dividing V on both the left and the right hand sides. We end up getting a formula V equals to NRT divided by P. This means V is equal to, equal to 0.5 multiplied by 8.314 times the t, which is 350, all over p, which is 150. We end up getting a value of 9.70 litres in three significant figures. If the question asks for the volume in milliliters, we simply need to make sure that we convert this value into milliliters. Our next question reads, when excess solid calcium carbonate is added to a 200 milliliter solution of hydrochloric acid at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa's, 12.53 liters of gas was produced. What was the initial concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution? Since we know that this is a gas calculation involving an equation, we'll begin the question by writing out the equation. So we have hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus solid calcium carbonate, which is CaCO3, that is going to form calcium chloride as our salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas. So we're given that 12.53 liters of gas was produced. The only gas that is being produced as a product is carbon dioxide. So we know for a fact that 12.53 liters is completely going to be the amount of carbon dioxide. We're also given that this condition is RTP. We know that RTP volume is going to equal to 24 0.79 liters per mole. This means the number of moles of carbon dioxide gas, if we work backwards, is going to equal to 12.53 divided by 24.79, and that is going to give us a value of approximately 0.505. Before we do any further calculations, we need to make sure that we have balanced our equation. And now our equation has been balanced. So the molar ratio of carbon dioxide to hydrochloric acid is 1 to 2. This means the number of moles of hydrochloric acid is equal to double the number of moles of carbon dioxide, and that must therefore equal to 1.01 moles. We want to know what the initial concentration is going to be, and we know the volume is 200 milliliters. C equals to 
n divided by v, since v is equal to 0 0.2 liters, and n equals to 1.01, .01, then that means our final concentration is going to equal to 5.054 moles per liter. And now we've given our answer in four significant figures, as that is the smallest amount that we've used in our calculation. For this next question, octane undergoes complete combustion at 298.15 Kelvin and 100 kPa's to produce carbon dioxide and water. What volume of carbon dioxide will be produced from one kilogram of octane? Since we know again that we're going to be calculating volume, we will at some point need to multiply a molar volume by a molar amount. Furthermore, we will also need to be able to recognize that since we are given a mass for the octane, we are going to need to use this value in order to calculate the number of moles for that particular compound. We should always begin by writing out the formula for the particular reaction, and we know that this is a complete combustion because it only produces carbon dioxide and water. If you're unsure about how to write formulae for reactions, please watch the lesson on balancing equations as well as the lesson from module 3 on the different types of reactions. This in particular is a combustion type reaction. So our equation is going to be C8H18, and that is a liquid, plus oxygen gas O2, and that is going to produce carbon dioxide gas, and also water, which is in the gaseous state. And to balance our equation, we'll add 8 here, we'll add 9 here, and then I guess this will be 25 on 2. But to make it look a little bit better, we're going to double it, so 2 here, 25 here, 16 here, and 18 here. So the mass of octane which is presented to us is given as 1 kilogram, and from that 1 kilogram we can use the formula n equals to m over mm, which is 1000, divided the molar mass of C8H18, which is 12.01 times 8, plus 18 times 1.008, and that is going to give us a value of 8.755 moles. We know that by looking at our stoichiometric ratio that the number of moles of carbon dioxide gas is 8 times the amount of octane. That means the number of moles of carbon dioxide gas equals to 8 multiplied by the n of octane, which is 8.755. And that is going to give us a value of 70.04 moles. Since Avogadro's law tells us that molar volume is constant for ideal gases at the same conditions, this condition being RTP, which is volume equals to 24.79 liters per mole, we're going to get a value by multiplying 24.79 by 70.04. And then we're finally going to get a value of 1740 liters and that again is given in three significant figures because three significant figures is the smallest amount that we used in our calculations. For this question we're going to be reacting an acid solution 50 mils of a 1 mole per liter solution of hydrochloric acid with a metal 1 gram of magnesium at RTP in order to form a gas and the question asks us what volume of gas is going to be reduced. So we need to be familiar with our metal and acid type reactions and so our equation is going to be given as magnesium Mg solid plus again hydrochloric acid HCl aqueous is going to produce magnesium chloride which is the salt plus hydrogen gas. And to balance our equation we'll add 2 here. So this question is rather difficult because we're given a limited value for both hydrochloric acid and magnesium, which means that we need to work out first which of the two substances is going to be a limiting reagent. So the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, that's going to be 0 0.050, which is 50 mils, multiplied by 1, which is 1 mole per liter, and that's going to give us 0 0.050 moles. The number of moles of magnesium, the, the mass, which is 1, gram divided by the molar mass which is 24.31 and that's going to give us a value of 0 0.0411. Since hydrochloric acid and magnesium react in the 2 to 1 ratio, we need to have 0 0.0822 moles of hydrochloric acid in order to fully react all of the magnesium. 
and therefore our limiting reagent is going to be hydrochloric acid. So that means the total number of moles of magnesium which are able to react is going to be this divided by 2. So our max Mg reacting equals to 0 0.025 moles. And we need to keep this number in mind. From here now, we know the number of moles of magnesium that reacted. We want to know how many moles of hydrogen gas were produced. The ratio is 1 to 1, which means that we have a total of 0 0.025 moles of H2. And we also know that this is RTP, where volume is equal to 24.79 litres per mole. So that means the volume of H2 equals to the N of H2 times 24.79, which is 0 0.025 times 24.79. And that's going to give us a value of 0 0.0620 litres in three significant figures. This is our answer. Here's our last question, which reads that the fermentation of glucose C6H12O6 produces ethanol, C2H6O, and carbon dioxide. A student performs fermentation at 298.15 Kelvin and 100 kPa's and measures the volume of gas produced over several days. Calculate the mass of glucose that reacted. Let's have a look at the table first. On the left-hand side of the table is the number of days that the glucose has been fermenting, and the V, which is a volume, is going to be volume of gas which is produced. We see that it goes from 0 0.57 to 0 0.77 to 0 0.85 to 0 0.92, and it remains at 0 0.92 between days 4 and 7. Noticing that the volume of gas being produced tapers exponentially until eventually stopping at day 4 indicates to us that all the available reactant which was used to produce the carbon dioxide was exhausted by day 4. Our goal will now be to work backwards to find out how many moles of carbon dioxide were produced, then use stoichiometry to find out the number of moles of glucose. This means that we will begin as usual by writing out our equation. C6H12O6, which is our solid, is turning into ethanol C2H6O, which is a liquid, and carbon dioxide gas. We'll add a 2 here and a 2 here to balance our equation. We notice that carbon dioxide is produced from glucose in a 1 to 2 ratio. This means the number of moles of carbon dioxide is going equal to 2 times the number of moles of glucose. The number of moles of carbon dioxide is going to equal to 0 0.92, which is the maximum amount of gas that's produced, divided by the molar volume of gas at RTP, which is 24. 0.79, and that is going to equal to 0 0.0371. We know that this value is double the amount of the amount of moles of glucose. So to find the number of moles of glucose, we are going to have to divide that number by 2. From here, we get a value of 0 0.0186. Finally, to calculate the mass of the glucose, we need to multiply the molar mass by the number of moles. That is going to equal to 0 0.0186, which is the number of moles of glucose, multiplied by 12.01 times 6, which is the mass of the carbons, plus 1.008 times 12, which is the mass of the hydrogens, plus 16 times 6, which is the mass of the oxygens, which will give us a value of 3.3 grams. And this is to two significant figures, because the smallest amount that we have used in our calculations is two significant figures, which is given to us on the table. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.